And we are back for another episode of The Productivity Show. How are you doing today, Brooks? Excellent. I just did this little Raspberry Pi project where I have a little screen that shows what's playing on my Sonos. Uh, so I'm very proud of that. <laughs> really, really productive use of, use of time, but this is what I do in my off time. Uh, but yeah, I'm loving it right now. I've been playing with it this morning for the first time and it's been fun. So all to say- I saw that photo. Not. Yeah, I saw that <laughs> yeah, and fun. that looked really fun and cool. And I uh, think of it as like a visual display of what's being played in the home and uh, you have some buttons that you can push and change and that's kind of fun and you get to be a little bit geeky as well at the same time which is always fun mm -hmm. um, for those who don't know uh, who we are my name is tan i'm the founder and ceo of asian efficiency where we help people become more productive at work and in life and today my co-host here is brooks duncan you are the operations director here at asian efficiency and uh as always, we are, we are going to share some of our productivity wisdom and help people become more productive. And one of the things we always like to do is share some of our top three favorite resources as of lately. And Brooks, I see you add some stuff here today. So uh, what do you want to share with the audience today? All right. So our top three resources, number one is a company called Swag Up. And we'll have links to all of these in the show notes productivityshow.com forward slash 313. SwagUp is a service that lets you create little gift baskets, um, personalized stuff like t-shirts, water bottles, all that sort of stuff. So if you have a something to do for your company, for your group, maybe for your family, you can design, package, put together, ship all with this service called SwagUp. Now, I haven't personally used it, uh, but a member of the Asian Efficiency Team, Sherby, uh, she has used it and she really recommended it. So she wanted me to make sure it was one of our top three resources. So there you go. Number two, my number two resource is called the Stream Deck by Elgato, which I think we've mentioned on the podcast before, but it's never been one of our top three resources. So this is actually a physical device that you have on your desk, although they do have a, a mobile app as well. Um, but the physical device is actually originally built for game streamers. So it's a physical device that has buttons that you can program. And so like I said, it's for game streamers mainly for like starting and stopping, doing effects, that sort of thing. But it can also be used for productivity as well. So so you can make it so that pressing a physical button can make things happen on your computer. I have a bunch of Zoom controls tied in, for example, even starting up this podcast. Uh, I started, organized it all with one button. Uh, and it's just a fun productivity device uh, that you can have if you want to press physical buttons and make something happen. So that's number two, the Stream Deck. Uh, and number three is the Anchor PowerWave Stand Wireless Charger. So a lot of wireless chargers are just these flat things that you have on a table or a desk and you just put your phone down and it charges it, which is great. Um, however, I wanted to have one that where the, the device is uh, standing up so that I could actually see it while it's charging. Uh, so that's the phone charger I have on my desk uh, for when I'm not in focus mode. When I'm in focus mode, I have it put my phone put away. But when I'm not in focus mode, I like to have it up uh, so that I can uh, have it up and facing me. So those are our three resources. Again, we will have links to all of this in the show notes. So you can just go to theproductivityshow.com slash 313. Or if you're listening to this on your podcast app, just swipe and you'll see the links in there as well. So Brooks, uh, you and I, we're going to be talking about our favorite work from home tools. And when we say tools, it would it will include digital things, but also physical things as well. So for those of you who are on a budget, I would say hide your wallets right now, put your credit cards away because you might be buying stuff that are really cool, but maybe a little extra uh, because um, we've been working from home for over a decade now and we've kind of discovered over time what's helpful, what's not, what makes you more productive, what doesn't help you. And uh, we're going to share some of our favorite resources here today. So if you're brand new to working from home, man, you're going to love this episode. We're going to share some of our favorite tools to help you be productive at home. And if you already are working from home, but you've been kind of like putting up with less than ideal physical and digital tools, uh, just because you just don't know what's out there and you didn't have the time to research anything, this episode is perfect for you as well. And if you're a newbie or a veteran, don't worry, we got stuff here for you today as well. So Brooks, um, why are we talking about this episode here today? Why are we talking about work from home tools? I know you've been working from home since 2008, 2009. Um, and we've kind of talked about this in other episodes. We have a lot of other episodes on working from home, but why are we talking about tools specifically today? 
Yeah, and it's the question, right? Like, do you do you need any sort of special tools, special apps, special uh, special uh, physical things to work from home? And obviously, the answer is no. You don't. You don't absolutely need these things. And in fact, uh, we've shared in the before, but I don't think we've ever shared the pictures. <laughs> uh, both Ken and I have a kind of similar story in that our early desk setups when we are working from home uh, are kind of ridiculous. Uh, for myself, when I first started working from home, uh, I had just moved into a, a new home and somehow in the move, I lost all of the legs to my desk. To this day, I don't know where <laughs> the legs ended up, but somehow they disappeared. So my very first work from home uh, setup was actually an Ikea tabletop being held up by boxes because we hadn't unpacked yet. <laughs> uh, and then Tan, an early an early work from home setup. Uh, uh, you wanted to, you were telling, you were saying that you wanted to have a standing desk, but you didn't want to go and buy a new standing desk at that point. So you just used books to hold your desk up. And I don't know why you and I both had the 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 presence of mind. We knew someday we would be talking about these things on a podcast. Uh, so we both somehow took pictures of our early setups. Uh, so if you go to the show notes, theproductivityshow.com forward slash 313, you can, you can uh, see pictures of both the Tan and my ridiculous uh, work from home, early work from home setup. So all to say, you don't need special things to work from home. You can start with whatever you have. Um, however, there's a difference between living with and getting starting with a, a less than ideal setup and thriving by having the, the stuff you're using at home to work from home. So physical tools, digital tools that really helps you be more productive instead of standing in your way. Like my desk did not, definitely did not, my early box desk <laughs> uh, with really horrible lighting uh, definitely did not help me. It, it, I would say it actually stood in my way, but I was still able to get started. So in this episode, like you said, we've both been working from home for more than a decade. We've both tried it all. Uh, so we're going to share some of the tools that we really like that make us more productive when working from home, uh, besides having legs on our desk. That's, I guess that's productivity tip number one. Um, Tan, do you have any examples of, of things you've changed, like physical tool, digital tool that you've changed that have, you feel has made you be more productive. Like for me, I think I've told this story before about how when the quarantine started and my wife started working from home, uh, she just started working uh, from, with this wicker Ikea chair that she used in, in, in front of the vanity in our bedroom. Uh, that is still her desk to this day. She's working two floors up right now. However, she found that she was having uh, really bad like back pain and shoulder pain because she was working on this chair that w definitely was not helping. So I think I've told that story on the podcast before. And so when she changed her chair, we, she didn't buy a new chair. She used a different chair that we had with some cushions and it's worked out really well. Um, but the other half of that story is when uh, she wasn't using that wicker chair anymore, of course, then the question is, what do you do with it? We didn't need, she, we didn't need two chairs in a our, in our bedroom. So what she did is she brought it down here to my office and stuck it in here. And at first I was kind of annoyed. Uh, uh, at first I was kind of annoyed because I, I was like, I don't want this chair cluttering up my office. I don't, I don't need it, an extra chair here. Um, however, as usual, she's right. Because once I had this chair that was, is not great for working from, but is uh, great when I want to like sit down, review something, take a break. Uh, it's really, really handy having that chair there now uh, to kind of get away to a different mental state from my desk. So as usual, she is right. Uh, and that change, adding her changing her desk has made her changing her chair has made her more productive uh, about me having this kind of other place in my office I can go to do more type thinking and reviewing work uh, has been great as well. Um, how about you? Have, is there any changes you've made that has uh, really improved your work from home experience? I've tried a lot of different things over the years. And I, I want to say the first tool that really made a big impact for me was having noise canceling headphones. So back in the day, uh, when you had wired headphones, I had the Bose QC 25s. Um, it's their top of the line noise canceling headphones for many years. Nowadays, uh, it's either the QC 35s or the 700s. And we were just talking about that as we uh, were starting this episode here today. And I remember getting this pair and I remember spending $350 thinking, oh my gosh, this is so much money. Um, but I've heard 
great things about this. So I bought this pair of headphones and did I really need it? No. Um, I could still focus and get stuff done. But once I had it and I put it on and I was listening to some of my favorite movie soundtracks, it, it made it easier for me to focus and stay focused. And so that was a big amplifier at that time. And when you have the right tools, it makes working and getting stuff done a lot easier. And if your goal is to be productive and if your goal is to get stuff done in less time, having the right tools make that, makes that so much easier. And the analogy I always like to give people is um, if you've ever done any of our training on working from home, the analogy I, I teach there is going to the gym and losing weight, right? If you want to lose weight, typically you want to get your heart rate up, you want to elevate it. And, and that way you start burning more calories. Right. Um, and if you go to a gym where there's only barbells and dumbbells, you can't, I mean, you kind of can, but you really are not effectively getting your heart rate up and, and um, like losing the weight that you're looking for. Right. Oftentimes you want to use dumbbells and, and, and squat racks and, and that kind of equipment to build muscle. And so if your goal is to lose weight, but you don't have the right equipment because you only have dumbbells, it's kind of, it's kind of difficult. But if, if you do have the right equipment, you have a, a elliptical machine there or a treadmill, something that you can run on um, to get your heart rate up. Now you have the right tools, right? And that makes it so much easier to accomplish your goal. So if you want to lose weight, then you want to make sure you have a treadmill there. But if you want to put on muscle, you don't want to go to a gym that is full of treadmills. So there's just it's going to be so difficult to put on muscle that way, right? You want to go to a gym that has dumbbells, has a squat rack and so on. So when you have the right tools in place, it makes it easier to accomplish what you're looking to accomplish. Same thing here, right? If you want to be productive working from home, having the right tools will make it so much easier. So I love the example that you gave Brooks, like not having that chair or having the wrong chair can make it very challenging, right? And just like our desk setup, something that you and I have experimented, we thought, you know, what if we tried a standing desk? What if this is actually more efficient and effective? And we've run a lot of different experiments over the last decade or so. So we're going to share some of our favorites here today. And if you want to get some of our uh, other recommendations for um, tools and apps that we recommend working from home, you can check out our Home Office Hero course. Uh, so if you go to theproductivityshow.com slash hero, again, that URL is theproductivity theproductivityshow.com slash hero. You'll get our complete guide to the physical and digital, digital tools that will help you supercharge your productivity at home. So that includes gear that we're not going to be talking about today, but it really forms the foundation of the things you need being productive working from home. And if you want some additional training for free from us on how to be productive working from home, you can attend, uh, you can attend one of our sessions. Um, if you go to theproductivityshow.com slash work from home, Again, that URL is theproductivityshow.com slash work from home. Go to, that, go to that URL right now. You can sign up for it. It's free and you'll get some live uh, training from us to make sure that we help you stay productive and be productive working from home. All right, Brooks, uh, let's just uh, start diving into our recommendations here. So let's, let's do this. Let's do a physical recommendation first, right? I want you to give your physical recommendation and I'll give you mine. And then we're going to move over to a digital recommendation and we'll kind of alternate in between. How does that sound? That sounds very organized, very Asian efficient. Okay, perfect. So, um, Brooks, what is a physical tool product that you recommend to people when they want to be productive working from home? All right, so my first recommendation, if you're working from home, uh, especially if you're uh, working not just solo, but working with others, chances are you're on a lot of meetings, you're out video meetings, you're on a lot of Zoom meetings, Microsoft team meetings. And so my number one recommendation is to get a external webcam. Uh, I like the ones from Logitech, Logitech, I should say. Uh, so for years and years and years and years, I have used the Logitech C920, which I think is still available. Uh, and we'll have links to everything we talk about again in the show notes, the productivityshow.com forward slash 313. So the Logitech C920 is the one I use for years and years. I just recently upgraded at like the day <laughs> we're recording this podcast uh, to a, uh, the kind of the newer model. It's a 4K video. Uh, it's called the Logitech Brio. I think that might be the one you have as well, Tam. I just upgraded my webcam to the Logitech Brio. So it's a little bit more money, I think, than the, the, 
the 920, uh, but uh, I like it so far based on one day of usage. Uh, so if you want to go for the more budget pick, go with the 920. Uh, but yeah, a, a good external webcam. Now you might be saying that, you know, why do you need an external webcam? Doesn't a laptop or a, maybe a, uh, an iMac or something like that have a camera built in? Uh, and yeah, you can definitely get by, by with using that. It's not a problem. Um, I like using an external webcam because first of all, the quality usually is a little bit better. Uh, but number two, uh, it gives more flexibility. So if you have an external camera, then you can hook it up to maybe you have an extra monitor. Ex having an extra monitor is a work from home tip we've talked about a lot. So if you have a, an, uh, an external webcam, then you can hook it onto any monitor you want. You don't have to be uh, staring at the, say your laptop, even though like if your laptop's off to the side, you don't have to be staring off to the side. Uh, you can be staring straight forward. So yeah, I have my big monitor right in front of me. I have my new Logitech webcam uh, hooked up to it uh, and it works really well. Um, how about you, Tan? What's your, what's your number one uh, physical tool? So this is not in any order. So this is not necessarily my number one recommendation, but the first one I have here. And that is for those of you who are, are laptop users working from home, maybe, you know, when you were first to, forced to work from home, you had to bring your laptop with you. Uh, one of the things I would always recommend people is get an external keyboard and mouse. So don't use the keyboard on your laptop and don't use the trackpad or the little tiny mouse that you might have when you are uh, working from home or that might have come with your laptop. I would say recom and, and recommend that you invest in an external keyboard and a mouse that you absolutely love and adore. Because think about it, you're gonna be working on this every day, Monday through Friday. So you wanna make sure that the tools you are using are awesome and things that you truly enjoy, right? So ha if you like the clickety-clack keyboards, right, then make sure you grab one of those. If you like your mice or mouse to be a certain shape or certain size, make sure you get that. So uh, I've always had a laptop and that's always my preference. I've always gone back and forth now that I'm traveling a little less to think about, oh, maybe I should get a standalone you know, computer. But I like the flexibility of a laptop, but then, when I do go that route, I always make sure that I invest in an external uh, keyboard and a mouse as well. So the one I'm using right now is the Logitech K750. And the cool thing about this is it comes in two colors, white or black, and then also it's solar powered. So it doesn't run on batteries. So it charges just by being near sunlight. And so um, I never have to charge it. I have probably had this one for seven years now, never changed the battery or anything. And, uh, and, and I love it. So that's the keyboard I personally use. And then also the, the mouse that I have is the Logitech MX Master. That's the one I like. Um, probably had this for whew, six, seven years as well. Um, and I charge it maybe like once a month or something. And uh, it's super easy to use. It, it's originally kind of used for gaming, but I like it because of the shape and the, the speed of the, of the mouse. So. Uh, this is this is an episode not sponsored by Logitech. I will say that, even though <laughs> yeah. these are Logitech products, uh, it's something I didn't realize as we were putting this together. Um, but if Logitech is listening, you guys want to sponsor us, please reach out because we love your products. Yeah, that's so funny. I didn't I didn't realize that our our first four products or Logitech recommendations. Uh, but yeah, I totally agree about having the external keyboard and, and mouse or trackpad if you're a, a trackpad person, because also what that allows you to do, first of all, you can get exactly the, the typing and mousing experience that you want, but also by doing that, it allows you to use, say, a stand to raise your laptop up so you're not hunched over, so you're looking straight ahead. Uh, so yeah, I'm a, I'm a big believer in that. Uh, this is actually great timing because I'm kind of in the market for uh, for a new keyboard and mouse. I've been using uh, the Apple Magic keyboard and Magic trackpad, but the original ones from uh, these ones I bought in 2012. Uh, so I've definitely got my money's worth out of them, uh, but they're kind of starting to be a little finicky sometimes with the charging and connection. So I'm kind of in the market for a new keyboard. Uh, some of the members of the dojo, we record these 
these episodes live with our Dojo online community um, are sharing some of their keyboards. So uh, Luke has this cool looking wireless mechanical keyboard, the F96 Coral. Uh, it looks really awesome. So I'm, I'm uh, kind of thinking of going the mechanical route uh, just to just to have it as a throwback to my older computer years. Uh, and then uh, Priscilla also uses a Logitech wireless. So uh, yeah, 100% agree with the external keyboard and mouse recommendation. All right, so let's uh, go on with a digital recommendation here, Brooks. And uh, is there an app or something digital that you recommend people get started with? Yeah, so my, my first digital recommendation is kind of related to my physical one in a way, um, which is using an app or a tool to manage your webcam settings. So if you're on camera a lot, which a lot of us are, um, your webcam settings might not be ideal. And in a lot of cases, you may not have a lot of control. It just your, your camera shows what, uh, shows what it wants to show and there's not a lot you can do with it, which if you have perfect lighting and perfect framing, uh, that's all totally fine. Um, however, sometimes you're showing more than you want to behind you. Maybe you just want it focused on yourself, but it's showing half your room. Uh, maybe the color or the brightness isn't quite right. Uh, there's tools that you can use to actually adjust that. So Windows has a basic camera apps uh, built in. It's called camera and you can adjust brightness, focus. Uh, you can, if you have a, something like a surface, you can pinch to zoom. Uh, if you have a, a touch screen uh, and then there's some more te techy uh, options as well. On the Mac, there's an app that I've used for years and years and years called webcam settings and we'll, I'll, we'll include a link to that. Uh, what it does is it gives you really, really fine control over what your camera is doing. So, um, you know, it's a couple dollars. It's not your usual 99 cent, dollar 99 app, um, but I, I've used it for years and years and years and, and love it. Uh, so if you are on camera all the time for work, uh, it may be worth checking out. So yeah, a webcam settings app like webcam settings uh, is my pick. Sweet. Uh, I had no idea that you could do that. So that's something I have to pick up myself because I'm on camera all the time. <laughs> so uh, optimizing that makes a lot of sense. So thank you for sharing that. I'm, I'm learning here today as well as we are recording this. That's awesome. So uh, as far as my recommendation goes, so if you're on Windows, I would recommend Dropler. It is D-R-O-P-L-R. Or if you're on Apple or the uh, Mac, I would say drop share. So what they both have in common is um, it allows you to quickly share any file uh, onto the cloud and to get, get that URL copied to your clipboard right away. Because when you are working from home and you are in a remote setting, you're going to be sharing a lot of files, whether it's screenshots, Excel documents, Word documents, uh, images, right? And Sometimes you just want to like share it in an email or um, sometimes the file size is too big. Sometimes you maybe you want to share it on a messaging app like Slack or, or anything else. But then um, sometimes the more effective way to share these things is to upload it to the cloud and then share that URL with your coworkers or, or other people. And so DropShare and Dropler make that really easy. So you just like select a file, drag it onto the app, and it will upload it right onto the cloud and then copies the URL of the file onto your clipboard. And then you just paste it anywhere you want, right? So I oftentimes use this when I'm like sharing stuff um, like PDF documents. Like typically what I would do in the past is I would go to my Dropbox folder, right? And then find the right folder where I would put it in. Sometimes it would be the public folder, which is the thing that I always recommend it. And then from there, I would find the file, right? Drag it into that folder, right click it, and then say, hey, copy URL. And then I would go back to my email and say, hey, here's the file. And as you are listening to this, you can tell that that is a lot of steps, right? And so you can simplify all of this by using one of those digital apps that I recommended, DropShare or Dropler. And all you do is just literally, you select the file, you drag it to the app. So if, if you're on your Mac, you drag it to the menu bar. It uploads it right away, gives it a URL, and you just paste it, and you're good to go. So much faster. So definitely recommend you check that out. 
Yeah, I used Dropler for years and years and years. And the good thing about it is it is cross-platform, like you said, Mac, Windows, uh, other platforms as well. Uh, I recently switched to DropShare. I think it might even be a, have been on your recommendation. I can't remember how I found out about it. Uh, I like the UI a little, a little bit nicer. Uh, so they both work really, really well. So you can't go wrong, uh, can't go wrong either way. All right, so that is our second or that our first digital tool, and uh, like uh, Tan's Asian Efficiency Plan Go, we'll keep uh, we'll keep on rolling with that. We'll do our second physical tool, uh, and I will start with mine. So my my second physical tool is an anti fatigue floor mat. So uh, in the chat, uh, alongside with recording this, uh, Lee said that he has the Jarvis Remy standing desk. Uh, I also have a standing desk. I know you do as well. And if you work while standing even part of the time, which uh, I was just at physio, uh, a physio appointment the other day for a totally unrelated thing. And he recommended that I do sitting and having a sit stand desk. And I said, I'm way ahead of you doc, <laughs> uh, because I, I'm always uh, moving up and down sitting and standing. Uh, but I, a, a big tip for that is that a lot of times when you're standing for any length of time, uh, you know, your feet can get tired, your knees can get tired. Uh, a great solution to that or something that helps a lot is an anti-fatigue floor mat. Uh, so the one I use is uh, I got it as an upsell to my, uh, to my standing desk. So when I was buying my, my desk from Fully, I, I bought it from the same place that uh, Lee did. Uh, an upsell was a, a standing gel mat. So I got that. So that's what I'm standing on right now. Uh, it works really well. Um, if I didn't have that as part of that transaction, there's a, a less expensive, but really, really popular one on Amazon that I would probably try if I didn't already have this one, uh, which is a uh, anti-fatigue comfort floor mat by SkyMats. And it has something like 9,000 five-star reviews or some, some, some huge amount of, of high reviews. So that's probably one I would check out if it was me. You can even go a bit further than that though. There's standing desks that are floor mats you can get that aren't flat. They have uh, like ridges along the edge. They have a, a kind of like ridge thing in the middle. So uh, an example of that is the Topo Comfort Mat by Ergo Driven. And so what that does is, is as you're standing, you're not just standing on this flat surface. You can kind of adjust your, your um you're standing as you go through the day uh, and kind of stretch and uh, manipulate your, your position as you're standing, which can really help as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, ever since, especially since I got rid of my carpet in my office and switched over to having uh, laminate, having this anti-fatigue floor mat has been a, a lifesaver when doing things like standing, uh, recording podcasts and stuff like that. It's funny you say that because I accidentally discovered that many years ago, but it was because I was at my grandpa's place and he loves cooking. And when you go to their kitchen, they have this kind of like anti-fatigue mat in the kitchen, in the whole kitchen area. And so when you're walking there, you kind of feel like you're walking on clouds a little bit just because it's so soft. And I felt, oh, wow, this is really interesting. Um, and I asked my grandpa, like, why, why? Why did you have this installed? And he said, well, I stand all the time in the kitchen uh, and I love cooking. I sometimes stand there for hours. So it makes a lot of sense to get this mat in place. And I thought, oh, you know, I stand at home a lot too. Maybe I should get a mat as well. And that's how I kind of accidentally discovered, you know, uh, there's actually a thing out there called the anti-fatigue mat, uh, not just for kitchens, but also for people who work from home. So that's how I accidentally discovered it. And also when you just mentioned that the product you recommended um, has 9,000 reviews, my skeptical radar went up right away. So <laughs> this is a, this is a uh, recommendation that I haven't made before on the podcast, but there's a Chrome extension called reviewmeta.com. So it's called reviewmeta.com. Um, and what it does is it basically looks at Amazon reviews and it can tell you if those are real or fake. And it will give you a rating showing you like, oh, this, this product page you're looking at right now, these uh, do seem real. So this is a legitimate score. Or if you go to a product page and it'll show you like this red icon, you know, oh, there's a lot of fake reviews here. 
uh, something we just have to pay attention to nowadays when we mm-hmm. are shopping on Amazon, unfortunately. So review Meta. It's a Chrome extension. Highly recommend it as well. Again, this is not my recommendation originally planned. Mm-hmm. It's just when I heard 9,000 reviews and I, I go, oh, let me, let me double check this. Um, but yeah, it is legit. Yeah. Let me run this through review meta. Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, uh, we'll include a link to review meta in the show notes as well, because that does sound really, uh, really, really helpful. All right, so my physical recommendation here for the second uh, item here is, and this is gonna sound really funny, uh, but trust me, you're gonna love this. It is purse hooks. Now, let me explain, okay? This, this is coming from a guy who doesn't wear purses or anything, but um, when you are working from home and you have your kind of desk set up in place, there's a lot of things you want to hang. There's a lot of things you want to kind of like leave on your table or free, or if you want to free up space, one of the best things I've discovered, and this is something a woman told me, uh, was to use purse hooks on your desk. So I use it, for example, for my headset, right? So I have a purse hook here where I have my headset hanging. Um, I have a purse hook on the other end where it's grabbing some cables, um, so I recommend getting those purse hooks and they're really cheap. You can just go to Amazon, look for purse hooks. It uh, doesn't have to be, you know, crazy or shiny or colored. I mean, you can, if you want to, I know some women love that. Uh, but for me, I just want something super simple. It's, you know, silver ish and very functional and cost me like three or $4 or something. But I love it because I can just quickly hang my headset and uh, because they are mobile, right? You can, like women use it because they carry it with them. So when they go to the bar or a restaurant or something, instead of putting their purses down uh, on the floor, they, they can kind of hang them, right? And something I learned too is, I, I, this is a really funny story. I was dating this woman in Los Angeles and uh, she had a really expensive Chanel bag. And she's like, hey, Tan, I'm going to go to, as we're like sitting down, we're go- he's like, hey, I'm going to use the restroom here. Take my, take my hand back. And uh, yeah, this is back in the day when I barely knew what a handbag was or what was expensive or not. So I put it on the floor and she comes back and she goes, <gasps> what do you, what did you do? And I was like, what do you, what do you talk about? And she's like, you put my Chanel bag on the floor. I can't believe you did that. And she like went off on me and I was like, oh, okay. Lesson learned. <laughs> and she's like, here, I have a purse. This is what you use that for. I was like, ah, oh, okay. Smart. And then later on, I also learned about how you can use that for your desk. So uh, as related to working from home here today, uh, get yourself a purse hook and hang your headphones, cables, anything that is on your desk that you want to hang. Um, because anytime you have a clean desk, it makes it much easier to focus. And then also it makes it much easier to kind of like stay clean and tidy. So by the end of the day, some of the things, one of the things we always talk about is clearing to neutral, right? So it's kind of like clearing everything. So it's ready for the next day, whether it's like putting your toothbrush in the right place, Uh, closing all the apps on your screen or clearing your desk. Uh, Imagine coming to your desk the next morning and it's all cluttered and it's messy. It's going to be so much harder to focus, right? So that's why we always recommend that you clean uh, and kind of like reset everything, which we call clear into neutral. And purse hooks helps with that. So definitely recommend you get one. Yeah, it's so funny. Just the other day I was... You know, there's those those websites, those blogs that share um, uh, gear, tools, that sort of thing. Uh, and I saw this one post uh, about this uh, sp- special hook for headphones, uh, just like really engineered. Uh, I, it was really expensive too, like $40, $50 or something like that. And I was looking at that and I was thinking, because uh, you had told me about the purse hooks before and I was thinking to myself, really? For <laughs> thanks to Tan's tip, I could just go and get a purse hook for for three dollars and be done with it. I don't need this really, really expensive thing. Like I, I'm, I'm totally into buying, uh, spending money where it makes sense. But that just doesn't strike me as something that uh, makes sense to spend a ton of money on it, unless it has some sort of special function. Oh, and by the way, uh, in the in the in the chat, uh, going back to the, the floor mat topic, Luke uh, from the dojo recommends that he says he really enjoys his Topo Mini floor mat. Uh, so I mentioned the Topo, Topo comfort mat. Uh, he likes the Topo Mini. So I will make sure to include links to that. Uh, and speaking of clips uh, in the dojo, Phil recommends the hero clip. So it's a, a clip you can use for on the go. So definitely uh, we'll have links to all those things as well. All right, Brooks, uh, let's get into a digital recommendation here. So when it comes to apps, 
or anything digital, what would you recommend second here? All right, so another recommendation I have for digital solves one of the big problems that you can have when you work from home. And, and somehow doing that, working from home makes this way worse than working in an office, which is you can get down on your, at your desk uh, and then you can just keep working. You don't take breaks. Uh, you start neg neglecting your, uh, get, you don't get up and stretch. You, you, don't, uh, you don't hydrate. So my, my recommendation is an app for iOS and Android, thankfully it's cross-platform, called Waterminder. And the purpose of this app is to track and and remind you to drink water. And drinking water, of course, it, we've talked about this on the podcast many times, has so many health benefits. And just getting up to get water uh, gives you that little break you need when you're working from home throughout the day. And if you're an Apple Watch user, uh, it has a complication as well to track, to show your water uh, and to remind you. Uh, so basically what it does uh, is, uh, like it says, it has a, a a picture of a of a human body in the app. It's actually a nice looking uh, nice looking app, and uh, you set your water goal based on. First of all, you can either just set a goal or you can give it your height, weight, age, all that sort of stuff, and it will can make a recommendation for you, uh, and then. As you drink water, you can set up special buttons to press uh, to, like if you have a water bottle that's always 500 milliliters or 12 ounces or something like that, you can have it set up to make it really easy. Uh, and then you just tap that button and it will track. Uh, and I kind of like, as you go through the day and you drink more and more water, it uh, kind of, it kind of, uh, um, shows it like a, on the human body uh, reaching towards your goal. Uh, so it shows it has a nice visual representation of the, of the water that you're drinking. Uh, and you can set it up so that it reminds you at certain intervals uh, to get up and drink your water if you haven't uh, entered anything for quite some time. So there's very few cases where I want to be um, annoyed by notifications, but being reminded to drink water is one of those, one of those annoyances that which I don't mind uh, because it's, it's helping me. Uh, so yeah, uh, water minder, if you, if you're drinking more water is a goal, uh, water minder is a, is a really nice way uh, to do that. You know how back in the day when people were asking, you know, is this possible on the iPhone or on, on your phone? People would always say, well, there's always an app for that. And this is like a prototypical example of that. Like if you need a reminder to drink water, yes, there is an app for that. And Waterminder is the app that we recommend there. And it's also available on Android, right? Yep, uh, absolutely. Android and iOS cross-platform. Cool. So uh, let's talk about my top pick here for digital as the second recommendation here. And that is something that allows you to quickly share a screenshot or a screen recording, because that's something you'll do a lot, especially when you're working from home in the team setting, you have to share like a, a screenshot or part of your screen. Or if you're having a meeting, you want to oh, um, kind of like quickly share something. Uh, I find that uh, that is an activity you want to optimize and make really efficient. So earlier I talked about how you want to quickly share files and stuff. This is kind of like another ver variation of this by right? quickly sharing screenshots and screen recordings. So for example, you could send an email saying, Hey, um, you know, instead of me typing this really long email, I'm going to record this quick video and I'm going to demo on my screen what I'm looking to get done or what I need you to fix or uh, this is the thing I need to communicate to you so you understand what I'm trying to communicate to you. And so there is uh, several tools and, and apps for this, but if you're on Windows, I recommend Cloud App. So again, Cloud App for Windows. If you're on the Mac, there are a lot of them. Um, the one I'm using right now is Zappy by a company called Zapier. And if you've listened to our podcast episodes before, you probably know that Zapier is a service and, and app sort of platform we recommend for people who want to connect different platforms and tools with each other, uh, especially if you're into automation. So uh, again, the name of the app that they've produced is called Zappy. So Z-A-P-P-Y, or if you're in Canada, Z-A-P-P-Y. And... Uh, <laughs> I, I try to be mindful of all our Canadians here and, and some of our Europeans. And um, yeah, I, I know Brooks, you, you do this all the time too. And there's other apps like Skitch can do stuff like this too. And if you use Evernote, that's a great combination and integration there as well. Uh, but I know we've recommended that many times. So uh, I want to share something that I've recently experimented with and really love, which is Zappy. Yeah. 
screen recording, whether it's pictures or videos, is so, so, so important when you're working from home because if you're working in an office and you want to show somebody something like you don't want to bounce an idea off somebody or have a quick question, you know, you can just call them over to your desk uh, or go over to their desk and, uh, and show them. However, when you're working from home, that becomes way more difficult. And yeah, you could like start a zoom meeting, share your screen uh, and go through all that. But if it's just something quick uh, or if you're having a, a meeting and you want to, and you want to capture part of it, being able to, to record something and then show it to somebody just saves so, 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 so much back and forth. And it just makes life working from home way, way more efficient. So that's, I'm 100% on board with that, with that pick. Whatever tool you want to use, uh, have some tool that lets you do that is really, really powerful. All right. So uh, as always, when we do stuff at Asian Efficiency and on the Productivity Show, we want to make sure it's simple and actionable so that you walk away with one thing that you can uh, use right away. And so whether it's a top three resource we mentioned at the beginning or some of the resources we mentioned here, we, what we recommend that you do right now is to just pick one tool that you're going to get right now. Right. So don't let analysis paralysis get to you. Just pick one tool, whether it's digital or physical, doesn't matter. Just if you listen to this episode up to this point, there's probably something in there that really resonate with you. Right. So pick that one tool, install it, get it right now. And, um, I would recommend that you use it right away. So you get familiar with it and the faster you use it, the more likely you will get the benefit from it. Okay. And if you want to get some more of our recommendations in terms of home office setups, what kind of digital tools we recommend and physical tools we recommend as well as a foundation for being productive working from home, uh, we have a really tiny course called Home Office Hero. It's, it's really short and quick and very affordable. So if you want to check that out, go to theproductivityshow.com slash hero. Again, that URL is theproductivityshow.com slash hero. If you want to links, if you want to have the links to all of the stuff that we've recommended today, you'll find it in the show notes. You can go to theproductivityshow.com/slash three one three.